Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. So this week on Instagram and Facebook, there's been a lot of talk about improvised tourniquets. Apparently there was a doctor who went on Rachel Ray and made a pressure bandage, probably not a tourniquet, and so people are up in arms. So I wanted to make a video and talk about improvised tourniquets. What's the best way to make an improvised tourniquet? Even though an improvised tourniquet, I've said many times, should not be your plan A. So let's talk about them. But first, let me say that plan A absolutely should be to have a good commercial grade tourniquet. This should be plan A. But maybe you're at an event, something bad happens, and you got a lot of people bleeding, and you run out of these very quickly. So you got to start making your own. That's where we can talk about this. All right, so to make an improvised tourniquet, you need a couple of things. You need some bandaging of some sort. It could be a t-shirt, okay? It could be a triangle bandage. It could be a piece of cloth. It could be whatever you want it to be, okay? Just some kind of material. And you also need some kind of mechanical advantage, okay? Just tying this around the extremity and tying a knot, pulling it super tight, probably not gonna make a tourniquet. It's probably gonna make a good pressure bandage, but that's it. So you need some kind of mechanical advantage. It can be a pair of scissors. Tie knot, rotate it. This is good. Could be a flashlight. There again, tie knot, tie no knot, rotate. This is your mechanical advantage. For me, this is how I keep my truck keys. I keep all my other keys on a separate keychain, but my truck key stays just like this. This carabiner is a mechanical advantage. All right, here. So, once again, our buddy is in trouble. Just slightly and you don't have a tourniquet on you so the first step is you gotta hold pressure okay and this could be using his t-shirt okay I'm not pulling my shirt off pull his shirt off and you gotta hold pressure okay I'm talking about good solid pressure and don't forget right here if you're holding pressure with his t-shirt and some happens to get down in there to the source of the bleeding uh, wound packing should say then you can absolutely do that. You know, you can get the gauze down in there to inside the wound and hold the pressure. No problem there. This is what we call compressible bleeding here. So we're gonna hold pressure on it. If we can't get the bleeding to stop, then we will apply a tourniquet. So, but you can see, I put my knee down here. This is a pressure point. This would maybe help me slow the bleeding down. And I've got here, okay? And I'm squeezing, trying to hold pressure the best I can. Okay, and it's just bleeding through. Blood's still dripping out. I can't get it. You know, maybe I've changed my hand positioning here, trying to get the bleeding to stop, but I can't. So we got to make a tourniquet. Okay, we don't have a commercial grade tourniquet, so we're gonna improvise. So I take another piece of cloth. This could be part of his pants leg. Okay, this could be a towel laying beside us. It could be something else. Just some kind of material. You want to make this at least an inch and a half, two inches wide, you can say that. So you want this nice and wide, and then tie a knot. Doesn't have to be a fancy knot, just a knot. Take your windlass, whatever you're wanting to do to make this an improvised tourniquet. You need some kind of mechanical advantage. We're going to use an Olight flashlight for this. Tie another knot. And now you start to rotate. And it is getting tighter as I rotate. Now, inevitably, one of the problems with an improvised tourniquet is the how to stop this from unspinning. Okay? So, what I would do is one, is I'm stuck now. I'm just going to hold this and say, buddy, sorry, it really hurts, uh, but I've stopped the bleeding. Or I get a bystander, someone else who can come help me. Or I help someone else. Go, hey, look, I don't let this unspin, okay? So use bystander to help, okay? Tell them what to do. Give them simple, firm directions and let them help. Don't forget to treat for shock the best we can here, okay? So have the person lay flat. Cover them up with a blanket. Maybe you have a space blanket. Maybe you have to cover them up with something else. But you can treat for shock as well. Come here, buddy. So, hope this video helps. You never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember the right gear and the right training.